What is going on, people? It is your boy, Daddy Mac, and welcome back to a brand new Pokemon Sword and Shield Team Builder. Last Team Builder, we built around a Gigantamax Grimmsnarl. This time around, we're going to go ahead and build around a Gigantamax Duraludon. It's very, very, very early in the morning. It's about 6.30 in the morning, and I am a really, really, really tired. Bear with me. Now... I'm going to go ahead and start from the bottom right and end at the top left as usual. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting with Pokemon number one. We got none other than the queen of overused Clefable. Clefable is running magic card with leftovers. We're running 252 HP and 252 defense for max bulk and add the rest into the special defense. So this is a little bit of a wall set, but as you can see with this Clefairy, we're running Cosmic Power, of course, to increase our defenses, both in physical and special defense. We're running Flamethrower to deal with this pesky Ferrothorn running around the generation. We don't have a lot for the Ferrothorn, so I think catching it off guard with Clefable is actually a really good idea. We got Moonlight for recovery, and Stored Power is going to be one of the best moves that this Clefable can spam, because we got Cosmic Power increasing two, two stages each time. Now, I wanted to substitute Flamethrower for Calm Mind, given that we can get a third stat boost, but it, it just wasn't worth it to me. I think Flamethrower is pretty, pretty useful in this uh, particular team here. Moving on to Pokemon number two, we got a Pissimian. Fighting type Pissimian, of course, no, none other than the lemur monkey Pokemon itself. Now, I couldn't get a defiant, a, a defiant Passimian in time, so we're gonna go ahead and use Receiver. Now, we're running Choice Scarf, try to outspeed some things here and there, including a Diggersby, including a Darmanitan. Um, now, the biggest thing with this Passimian is more, it's more of a scout and then hit and then run. So we got U-turn. We got, I need to, there you go. We got U-turn for pivots, Iron Head for coverage against these fairy types running around. Also, Earthquake for coverage and close combat as our prime attack. Nothing too new with the Passimian. We just got 252 speed to maximize the speed stat, of course, and attack stat and throw the rest into the defensive stat. Pokemon number three on this team is gonna be Vileplume. I couldn't get an effects for Vileplume in time either so we're gonna run Clairfoil and then give it black sledge for recovery now the moves we are going to be running on this is sleep powder and toxic i kind of messed up with this vile plume um i was going to give it strength sap as that's one of the biggest strengths that this pokemon has as a wall also um but since i didn't necessarily breed for it we're gonna go ahead and run sleep powder and toxic and then moonlight for recovery just like the fable and then giga drain for additional recovery um i am thinking about moving giga drain for maybe a poison type attack but i'm not 100 percent sure how i'm feeling about that 252 hp 252 defense and throw the rest into the special defensive staff so we got a pretty bulky team as you can see so far the next Pokemon on this list is going to be none other than Bickable. Now, I'm going to be honest, I forget what EV spread I have on Bickable. I'm just going to check for you guys really quick. Um, that way you guys know what I'm running here. But Bickable has Levitate, of course. Uh, it has a Focus Ash because the primary use for this Bickable is going to be Sticky Web. For those of you who don't know, Sticky Web is an attack. It's kind of like Stealth Rocks. And it's kind of like Spikes and Toxic Spikes. It, it's one of those moves where if the opponent switches in, it's a hazard move. That's what I'm trying to say. In this case here, if the opponent switches in into my sticky web, they're gonna they're gonna lose one stage at speed. And given that we don't have the fastest team in the world other than Pissimian, this is gonna help the team a lot. Especially, you know, Frodont, who's gonna sweep our primary sweeper actually, Pissimian, who's pretty fast but can be a lot faster. Etc. Etc. Now the EV spread I'm running on my Vika Volts is actually 252 special attack, 252 speed, and throw the rest into special defense. Vika Volt is not the fastest Pokemon in the world, but if I can sticky web, switch it out and preserve it for later, I'm pretty sure it's gonna do some damage. Now we got Bug Buzz and Thunderbolt as primary stab uh, stab attacks, and then Energy Ball for coverage against these Water types that otherwise wall Vika Volt. Now. 
the fifth Pokemon on this team is going to be our sweeping Pokemon. Now, I'm going to be honest, I have been using this team within uh, the battle, I guess it's battle spot. Um, it's now versus uh, the live competitions. But mo moving into that, the Broadon that I've been using, actually, I've been Dynamaxing a lot more often than Duraludon. I'm not going to do that so much within the six versus six battles because... Duraludon is the Pokemon we're building around, but if you guys ever get the chance to use a Dynamax Crawdon, do it. It's not going to disappoint. It's My, my Crawdon, as you can see, has adaptability. Gigantamax Crawdon with Max Knuckle and at least a Dragon Dance with a Sticky Web Up, it's going to do some damage to your opponent's team. Now, anyways, back into Crawdon and this team builder. We got Adaptability Crawdon with the Life Orb, 252 Attack and 252 Speed to maximize those two stats. And then we also have the rest into Defense. Dragon Dance is going to be our, our setup attack. It's not an attack, but it's going to be our setup move. Increasing Crawdon's attack and speed by one stage. After a plus one, it's actually going to outspeed a lot of Pokemon. Plus two, I'll be able to outspeed a Dragapult. Now, knockoff is going to be a pretty useful attack, given if my opponent wants to switch into something, I can just click knockoff and bam, that Pokemon loses its, its uh, item, and adaptability is going to treat it as if it was super effective, so that's pretty cool in my opinion there. Super power for coverage, and Crab Hammer as our primary stab attack, 100 base power, 90 per I think it's 90% accuracy, and it's just going to do some damage. I've been using the team again in battle spot singles and essentially Bronaut one hit KOs Excadrill with the crab hammer one hit KOs Dragapult with the knockoff it damages opponents teams once I actually get the right setup for it now the final Pokemon in the team is gonna be an assault vest Duraludon G max Duraludon G max Duraludon has the G max move known as G max depletion Basically what this does is that once you click this attack, your opponent's power points for the last move they used are going to go down. Uh, honestly, this move could be useful against players who use stall Pokemon such as Cursula, um, Pokemon such as Ferrothorn, you know, Pokemon such as that. The thing with it is that I'm probably not going to use it too much like I use G-Max T-Strike or other G-Max attacks. Now, what does stand out about this Duraludon is Stalwart. Stalwart is an ability that makes moves hit regardless of an ability. Think of it as Terravolt and whatever other abilities are similar to Necrom's Terravolt. Now, with this Duraludon, we got Dark Pulse, Draco Meteor, Thunderbolt, and Flash Cannon. I did think about running Steel Beam but 50% recoil is probably not worth it. Given my opponents, let's say we're in a situation where I'm in my last Pokemon and it happens to be Duraludon. My opponent has three Pokemon left and they're all fairy types. Steel Beam isn't going to do the trick because after two Steel Beams, we're going to go down and that's not necessarily what we want. So Assault Vest Duraludon here, 252 att uh, special attack and 252 speed. Uh, put in the rest into the special defensive stat, which is try to get used to that assault vest. Duraludon's special defense stat is not the best, and assault vest is mostly there to try to help it out. It is a modest nature. Now, in addition to this, the reason I said I'm not going to be clicking GMAC depletion a lot is because Dark Pulse, we're obviously a special attacker, and essentially, if we just Dynamax, Click Dark Pulse a couple times into a wall, for example. Their special defensive stat is going to go down, and that's going to be enough for Duraludon. Now, of course, Emax Depletion is can be a pretty handy move in, a, in certain situations, so I'm really excited to see how that is going to come into effect in our future battles. But there you have it. Our Duraludon Team Builder. We're going to have our first battle with this team here upcoming Friday. On Wednesday, I'm going to have another bit of a tutorial video for you guys and teaching you how to breed for IVs. Last week, we talked about how to... We didn't talk about how to. We talked about EVs and IVs, what they are and how they affect your Pokemon. Now, I'm going to teach you guys how to put those factors into play. That way, you guys can have a better understanding or start competitive battling. Now, 
last but not least make sure you guys leave a like follow my instagram because after this team builder well i'm gonna have a little bit of a voting as to what gmax pokemon we should build around next the link to my instagram is on the description down below Comment your thoughts down below as well on the comment section about the team, how it will perform, any changes that you guys would make. I'm really interested in hearing about that. And subscribe to my channel. That way you guys never miss any Pokemon Sword and Shield Wi-Fi battles. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.